Welcome to Copernicus Data Space Ecosystem. In this video, I will show you how to go from observing satellite imagery in the browser to actually editing your own code in Jupyter Notebooks. For this, we will use a notebook in the Jupyter Lab called From Browser to Jupyter. The Jupyter Lab is directly accessible on the Copernicus Data Space Ecosystem main page under the Analyze Data menu. If you are not familiar with how to set up credentials in Jupyter, please follow the first video in the description box below. So, in the Copernicus browser, we can take a look at satellite imagery, zoom and pan around and explore different visualizations. Our use case is going to be wildfire in Canada. This is a true color image. On this image, you can more or less see the affected area and you can see the smoke plumes, but it's very difficult to quantitatively analyze a situation like this. However, if you go to a different visualization, the shortwave infrared visualization, then you will already see the effect of the wildfire. The burnt area separates relatively clearly from the unaffected area, and the radiative power of the active fire is highlighted in red color. If you want a custom visualization, you can experiment with the different spectral bands of the satellite by dragging and dropping them onto the red, green, and blue channels of the visualization. Using these tools, you can create something very similar to the script we saw before. And actually, in the background for each of these visualizations, we have a small script operating, which is called the eval script or the custom script. Taking a look at this very simple script, what you see is the main parts are the, the setup, where the input bands are highlighted, and the evaluate pixel function, which does the actual calculation, and finally, the description of what bands to return in the form of the red, green, blue, and transparency layers for the output image. It is possible to use different eval scripts. We have a repository for them. This is called the custom script collection. These were contributed by our users, and each of these can be directly copied and pasted into this same algorithm box. We are going to take a look at what we call the burned area visualization. This has a bit of a similar structure, but it loads more bands. And then it calculates NDWI, NDVI, and uh, infrared spectral index that takes a look at the effect of the fire. Then a simple decision tree is created. And finally, the output colors are defined. If the decision tree evaluates to true, then it is assumed that it's not a burnt area and a true color composite is returned. If it evaluates the false, then area is burned, where you get a 1 in the red channel, 0 and 0 in the blue and green channel, so the burnt area will be highlighted in red. If we copy this script and paste it into the visualization custom script area, and then we refresh it, we get the visualization that actually highlights the burnt area. Now we move on to a different location using a similar script. This is a wildfire that happened in northeastern Greece. So clicking on the next link in the notebook, we go to the neighborhood of Alexandropoli in Greece, where you can see the same burnt area script highlighting the area affected by the fire. There is one addition to the script in the setup function. In the output part, we define an additional output, which is a one band output called burn mask. And then after the decision tree, we define that if the decision tree evaluates the true and the result is a true color image, the burn mask output will have the value of zero. If it evaluates the false, then the burn mask output will have the value of 1. So in addition to creating a visualized true color image where the burnt area is highlighted in red, this eval script also creates a second output where all burnt areas have the value of 1 and the rest of the areas have the value of 0. With this mask, we are still working in Copernicus browser. You could download the results and look at them, but this is not really ready for quantitative evaluation. So the next step 
is the request builder. The request builder is a graphical interface to the Sentinel Hub APIs, including the process API, the catalog API, statistical API, OGC APIs, batch and batch statistical APIs. So in this interface, you have to set up the parameters of your API request, and then you can run the request, and it's going to give you the resulting image in case of a process API request. Additionally, it will also provide you the code. Here you can select what language you want. In our case, we will want Python requests because this will relate to what we do in the uh, further parts of the Jupyter Notebook. The collection is Sentinel to L2A. We keep that, but we set the date to 12th and 13th of September, 2023. We change the resolution because we want to create an image that is ready for download. There is an area limit on the number of pixels that can be downloaded, so we actually reduce the resolution. If we want to process the output image in a GIS, then we need it to be in a TIFF format. Now moving back to the custom script in the notebook, we take the eval script here, which also has the burn mask outputs for zero and one. This can be copied into the eval script of the request builder. Similarly, the area of interest can be copied from the notebook. This is the area of interest part. We paste it in, we parse the request, and it moves to our area of interest. Now, we have to add an additional output, another TIFF, with the identifier burn mask that we copy directly from the Able script. Now, we have the data collection, we have the resolution, we have the output formats, we have the area of interest, we have the time, we have the eval script, and so it's possible to send the request. As a result of the request, we receive a tar file, and this file contains two files, one called burn mask containing the zeros and ones, and the other called default which is highlighted in red for burnt areas, and otherwise it's a true color image. Now it is possible to create a time series like this from the request builder, downloading separate TIFF images for every single date that you're interested in to create a time series of the fire damage. However, we can do this in a much more simple and straightforward way directly in Jupyter Notebooks. So coming back to the notebook, first of all, we have to import some dependencies. These are all libraries that are not specific to GIS or image analysis. These are just tools that are regularly used for handling quantitative data in Python. So we run with shift enter, we run the first cell. And then we move on to the next cell where we are going to handle our credentials. This is where you will need the client ID and the client secret that you have generated in your dashboard. So I copy my client ID. I hit enter, I copy my client secret, I hit enter again, and now my credentials are registered. We generate a session with an authorization token in the next cell. Now, if we want to do a time series of the situation before, during, and after the fire, we have to define some time slots. We have seen the last image so far for the 12th of September with the situation after the fire, and these are the steps before and during the fire. So we define a variable called slots. Next, we uh, define the eval script variable. This again is the very same evaluation script that we have already looked at in the browser and the request builder. It has the burn mask output and it has the, the true color and the red area highlighted. We are defining the variable eval script, which is now this script. 
In the next step, we are creating a request, which is very, very similar to the request that we actually uh, found in Requests Builder. So this request has the same components, the data bounding box, the data filter, the time range, the collection, the output type, the image, and here the ML script from the next window. In the same way, the API request that we run here has the bounding box defined about in this part, the data range defined according to the time, time slots that we uh, created in the previous cells. We are querying Sentinel to L2A data. Our output has a specific size and resolution, and we want a separate output for default as a TIFF and burn mask as a TIFF. We have defined the eval script in the previous cell, and we are using the process API. With the output, we want to write a tar file that returns the response in a way that we can also download it. We run this cell. In this cell, we have defined the request. Now we get the token that we created before. And we also run the request that we defined in the previous cell for all the time slots in our previous list of time slots. On the left side, we can see as the files, the tar files are created as an output of the request. This cell is complete now. So in the next step, we extract the files from the zip tar files for every time slot. Now we have a list that shows that we have for each time slot a default and a burn mask. Now we want to start creating plots. These are directly generated from the imagery that we have requested before. We do some setup, we define the size of the figure, and then from the time slots, we read the images and show them in these um, plots. The result is a set of five panels showing the situation before, during, and after the wildfire. Note that on the 2nd of September, we have some clouds obscuring part of the burnt area. This will influence our final calculations. We do the same plotting operation, but now for the burn mask output. So this will give us ones where the area is burnt and zeros where the area is unaffected. Again, here we see a time series of burnt area calculated from our API request. Now we want to actually quantify the burnt area. We want to count it. Since our burnt pixels are labeled with one and our unaffected pixels are labeled with zero, we can actually just sum up the values of the pixels inside the image and then divide it according to the resolution to get the burnt area. We run this function for each of the time slots, again, based on the images that we received. And this gives us already a short list of the burnt area rounded to one tenth of a kilometer. In the final step, based on this array of numbers, we can generate a simple line chart that shows us how the extent of burnt area changed during this wildfire. So with these very simple steps, looking at the image, observing the eval script, making small edits to the eval script, moving over to request builder, and then setting up the request in Jupyter, we can now very simply create a time series of the effect of the wildfire without actually downloading an image or installing anything. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the Copernicus Data Space Ecosystem YouTube channel and watch our next tutorial videos.